Hi, good evening. Today I did a webinar uh, training session for uh, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. I just thought I will encapsulate some of the main points in that training program and then put it up as uh, a YouTube video and that's the whole purpose of this uh, recording. And the training is in the art of persuasion. Even though it says art of persuasion, we need to remember that persuasion is both an art as well as a science, which deals with both parts of the human brain, which is the right part and the left part. So without much ado, let me start the training session. This training, in this training session, we will be looking at an introduction to the concept of persuasion, what it is, and then we will go back in time and then try to draw some leaves out of uh, Aristotle's teachings. And then we will discuss about what an argumentative persuasion is, non-argumentative persuasion is, because many a times what happens is subconsciously we use certain words in our persuasion, uh, which works against uh, our objective of uh, uh, reaching an amicable uh, settlement. We are uh, not in a position to achieve our persuasion objectives because of certain strategies, certain wrong words, et cetera, et cetera, which we will cover in the section on argumentative and non-argumentative persuasion. Then we will, of course, look at some seven important steps to master persuasion. And of course, we will have a finishing remark in terms of how we can assimilate the trainings, uh, learnings from this uh, small webinar and how we can put it in use in our respective area of operations. Now, as far as the concept of persuasion is concerned, it is used everywhere in the world. But normally when you put out this question in terms of what is persuasion and where is it maximum being used? In fact, today I asked this specific question in the training webinar and most of the people said it is used in sales and marketing. Yes, it is used in sales and marketing. But let's not limit its scope only to sales and marketing. It is used everywhere in the world, whether it is a HR department with union leaders or it can happen between countries. For example, a special envoy of India meeting the special envoy of China to resolve a border dispute, persuasion is involved. A father telling his son to take up a specific course uh, after his plus two, that is also persuasion. It happens between lovers. It happens between uh, husband and wife all the time. Persuasion is part and parcel of everybody's life. And that's the power of persuasion. So to sum it up, person, persuasion is nothing but certain factors that will influence the other person to say yes. Right. And as we have discussed, persuasion is both an art as well as a science. There is a science behind persuasion, which we will look at after a few slides during the course of this training program. Okay, these are poll questions. Uh, we may not be able to do a poll in this webinar, right? So let's go back in time to Aristotle's time when he explained the concept of persuasion. This typically means persuasion existed even during those days. So typically when we talk about human beings, every human being has his own line of thinking. And at some stage or other, in the course of every day's life, everybody wants to persuade, right? So in the process of persuasion, Aristotle has come out with very three very important uh, factors in persuasion. They are logos, pathos and ethos. Let me explain to you what is a logos, pathos and ethos. First is logos. As it clearly implies, logos means the logic behind your discussions, the logic behind your standpoint. Secondly, it is pathos. Pathos consists of some of the emotional elements which are considered while you are uh, persuading somebody. That's the pathos, emotional elements. And third is the ethos. Ethos typically talks about the ethics and morality, the ethics and moral aspects of any persuasion exercise is covered under 
ethos so in short we can say large large logos deals with the statement of facts for example statement of facts figures for example if you are persuading somebody to buy your car let's talk about a car salesman when he's persuading somebody to buy a car he talks about the car's bhp uh, he talks about the length the width the height the special features in the car the safety features etc etc all these things are facts and figures the second one is the pathos behind that the emotional elements when you typically talk about emotions it talks about not just the facts and figures but in the manner in which those facts and figures are presented to the customer those emotional are you able to strike a rapport with the customer with whom you are interacting are you doing things that establishes trust in the customer's mind these are the pathos behind that typically the selling techniques how well you speak to them as you say them um, um, what is your body language are you showing conviction in your talk all these things are pathos uh, i have worked in the automobile industry for quite a long time and it is natural that some of uh, the examples will be from the automotive industry and also because car is something that everyone has and the moment i talk something about cars examples about cars to substantiate these examples the learning becomes a lot more effective and that is the reason why i use some examples from the car selling industry right and the third aspect is the ethos when you talk about ethos it's the ethics and moral responsibility ethics and morally typically means we will not try to manipulate and we are not talking about manipulative sales techniques like uh, there are a lot of definitions in the market that the best salesman is the one who is able to sell a comb for a, to a bald man or who is able to sell ice cream to a guy in uh, greenland etc etc those are all false definitions in fact even during my sales training programs i come across a lot of sales participants who ask me uh, there is a proverb like this so we have to uh, you know um, uh, spread the net uh, we have to hunt the customer uh, we have got a murgi today uh, i have always said that these kind of languages should be avoided completely because uh, we we are not looking at short term sale numbers etc etc short term profits are not long lasting at all and that's uh, one thing that i always incorporate in all my training programs so that's the ethos part of it so persuasion whenever we do persuasion we need to keep in mind the ethical principles right so that is what it uh, typically involves the logos the pathos and the ethos part of it so in short we can say the logos deal with the left brain part of it we discussed persuasion as a science here is where the definition of science fits into this uh, persuasion the second we talked about the art of negotiation and that's exactly where the pathos part of it fits into the de definition and then of course we have these ethics and moral principles we can say that the legal aspect of any persuasion exercise okay so this is what is the aristotle's definition of these three and let us see how well it is implemented in various industries there are two kinds of persuasions one is an argumentative persuasion and the second is the non argumentative persuasion argumentative persuasion typically means you force your opinion on other people forcing one's opinion driving your point across because these are things that can put the other persons to a great disadvantage it might appear that they are listening to you but over a period of time you will fail to establish trust that's one of the pitfalls of argumentative persuasions but you can be very sure of putting your point across to the other person because that's the ultimate objective of any persuasion exercise but at the same time we need to keep in mind that argument your persuasion your efforts of persuasion should not be seen in the manner that you are forcing your uh, ideas across that's uh, one thing and the second is non uh, argumentative persuasion if you use these principles if you adopt these principles then obviously that becomes non argumentative kind of uh, persuasion yes we have a poll question and then we will talk about it okay uh, then we are going to talk about what precedes uh, persuasion when we say what precedes uh, persuasion we are typically talking about some of the drivers of persuasion what are those drivers of persuasion so typically one needs to keep in mind that when you are persuading the other party 
the other party has some information which is existing in him and crisis of plenty what is the meaning of crisis of plenty we are living in a digital age for example if you go back in time 40 years before for example say 1990 when i entered the car selling industry that was 1990 exactly 30 years before the only source of information for any customer to know about a car is through paper advertisements television wasn't very widespread yes televisions were there but not every house had a television set of course some advertisements used to come at that point of time mostly word of mouth from your neighbors and everything is corroborated validated when you meet a sales person face to face seek information from him but today in this digital world there are 1 million sites giving you information on cars automobiles comparisons etc etc so the crisis of plenty many researchers have shown that when you have more and more information it is very difficult to arrive at a rational decision little bit of information yes you can come to a rational decision but the same when it when huge volumes of information your brains cannot process that and ultimately you need to bank on somebody whose opinions matters to you and you will uh, include that as a vital component of your decision making process and then of course sensitization is very very important persuasion is not just giving out the facts along with giving out the facts a little bit of sensitization will help you meet your persuasion objectives in a much better manner so everybody wants some kind of a shortcut or rules of thumb and if presented properly it is easy to persuade people now if you look at the similarity because in a normal training session i put up these questions we do discussions on these and dissect these in much greater detail session runs for 15 20 minutes but unfortunately this is an introduction session just to give you what kind of pedagogy will be followed in our training programs and that is why i'm not harping too much on all this for example this particular thing what's similar in a ketchup masala and a butter the underlying principle if you think for a moment it's nothing but comfort and convenience for example in a ketchup what happens once upon a time our grandmothers our great aunties at home they used to make all these ketchups at home it's not a big science take out the tomato they will boil it they will peel the skin out of it they have their own ingredients they'll take maybe 3 hours to make ketchup and of course homemade ketchups very tasty second you got masalas today you have an mdr mdh masalas at home but weren't we weren't our fathers grandfathers using masala in our food in fact it is the masala seat of the whole world right we had masalas but what we used to do they had their own proportions little bit of red chili some dhaniyas some dal powder some salt some mixtures garlic i don't know what using these components ladies used to use mixi not even mixi even if you go back in time people used to grind this every house had their own stones they used to mine you know grind all this and they used to make masala the same thing holds good for your dosa batter where uh, you bring rice you soak it in water uh, say 10 hours 15 hours then you put it in a grinder clean the grinder all those but today people want comfort and convenience you have ready foods everywhere you get packed foods you get batter in a plastic pan open the plaster you know open the packet and you can make those as masalas nobody wants to get into that stuff it automatically comes ketchup there is a ketchup available you don't have to get into this tedious exercise of plucking tomatoes boiling them peeling out their skin etc etc everybody looks for comfort and convenience now on the subject of persuasion what happens is it is something like a masala a lot of people say oh that's too much of masala for example but that's not masala it becomes a masala if people use manipulative techniques provide wrong information provide wrong commitments then it becomes a masala but here masala is just for example we talking about convenience here so when you are bringing those where does persuasion come into effect keeping those ethical things ethical morality moral principles in mind and we do that persuasion it, it's nothing but comfort to the other person 
because he does not have to do all that he does not have to go through internet and you know uh, seek information etc etc if there is a person whom he can trust then it is very easy to persuade that person in your line of thinking but again at the cost of repeating it so many times we have to keep the ethical principles in mind as we do that recently i came across some advertisements which typically brings those aspects of pathos uh, your uh, pathos uh, logos and ethos in their advertisement these are some of the emotional advertisements which i have seen in the recent past which i thought i will share with you just go through this advertisement padosiyon ke yahan do padosiyon ke yahan khushiyon ki tokriyan hai aayi चीज पे एक खिल खिलाती तो दूसरी रूट जाती फिर भी साथ रहकर वह चलती गाता कहने को तो है अलग अलग पर एक दूसरे से अलग न रह पाती उम्र बड़ी साल बदले पर न बदली ये नाइन की यारी मुझे एक बड़ा याद आएगा oh, no. और ये वो रिश्ते होते हैं बड़े खास जिसमें हम बदले खुशी खुशी जहाँ खुशियाँ बसती है जहाँ आपके अपने करीब आते हैं जहाँ रिश्तों की जड़े मजबूत होती हैं अपना घर रिश्तों का बसेरा लोडा अपना घर इससे अच्छा क्या this ad is a very very emotional ad because who ever directed this movie he's playing an emotional card an emotional card in terms of touching the heart of their uh, targeted customers it's about two girls as you can see in this advertisement two girls bond together grew up together but with totally different mindsets as you can see from the advertisement one is a complete introvert and one was an extrovert both lead their lives both both of them grow up and this is a scene where the introvert girl is getting married and she was having an emotional uh, uh, discussion with her father that she is leaving the home and she will keep remember and at that time this girl comes and dances that extrovert girls and bring changes the vibration of air in the room bringing in that moment of happiness bringing that moment of joy and this girl also sings and dances right very emotional excellent high level of emotional appeal now the question that i need to ask you is where is uh, the logos issue here pathos completely taken care of where is the logo aspect logo in terms facts and figures as to why anybody should choose uh, uh, this particular property developer why should anybody choose there is no question there is no uh, uh, mention of it at all and as as regards the ethos part of it of course it's not nothing is unethical in this they don't use any uh, banned uh, cigarettes or uh, any theme uh, that is uh, derogatory so to that extent ethos concept has been taken and now the question is why 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 loda and why not anybody else that is not addressed but this ad has the highest moment of recall brand recall because in the manner in which emotional elements have been uh, taken and used okay? now we're going to look at the other one which i really was very very impressed look at this bharosa sirf ek lafz nahi hai na koi kalpana hai wo to ek gehra ehsaas hai tumhare man ki baat kabhi mere man mein bhi thi bharosa rakho Nagas necklace, temple aram, Lakshmi uti ana potri niye mana medik vanda. Madhuram inarshi neerla pato marir ko. Parangma. Arani harthi to to Gujarat ni Raj Kumari Jevi dekhaish. Ninety one point six percent perfect B I S hallmark purity. Ruby emerald harau. Chala manchi selection. It comes with Kalyan four level assurance certificate. Shall we build it? Hotid mane metid mane. Nee nee da subikshwa girli. Kundan antique with people pati necklace, Vyade Vaste. Pura Punjab to Adi Vyadiya galla karega. Pole key set for the reception. Idhar tanda kutiya kanda, payi ne khanda dalu.
कई जुबान और कई अनुष्ठान कई परंपराएं और कई संस्कार और हर रिश्ते की बस एक ही जज्बात कल्याण जूलस भरोसा है सब कुछ है Absolutely, an advertisement which touches the heart of people. And how did they do that? If you look into this advertisement a little more closely, he goes across whoever had conceived this advertisement. He grow, goes across the borders, crosses all the borders, various cultures, right from Punjab, then Gujarat, then your Tamil Nadu, your Kerala, your Bangalore. Uh, so your uh, um, uh, karnataka andhra covers the entire spectrum of audience and there cannot be anything more emotional than the daughter of the house getting married and going to a different household one of the most emotional uh, uh, aspects of anybody's life and they have leveraged very well in shooting this all one minute uh, video and that is how they have used in fact if you look at this advertisement it is also a means of persuasion and all rules of persuasions that we have discussed so far they have all been put into use in this small video the ethos part of it there's nothing um, you know Ill uh, illegal or derogatory here anything there's no, no content in this uh, particular uh, video that offends the sentiments of uh, uh, anybody so that way the ethos part of it is taken care of very well and the second we are talking about the logos part of it the facts and figures if you remember there was one specific scene in which there was that purity meter in which they tested and said it's 19.9% perfect or something so here there is some element of uh, logos also in this facts and figures as to why you should buy that they talk about the trust thousands of customers have established on that particular brand and that was uh, the uh, logos part of it and of course the pathos this pathos and pathos nothing else uh, across the country you know the languages can differ your cultures can differ subcultures can differ but the basic traits the basic emotions between a father and a daughter of the house leaving the house is something very very precious and this concept has been captured very well by the person who conceived this advertisement it takes into account all the rules of persuasion of course any advertisement is something to persuade you to buy a product and that's what it means we must say we must agree that they have done it quite well now uh, we will look at uh, the science part of it there are certain very very important structure there is a structure to the whole uh, persuasion game which starts with reciprocity reciprocity is extremely important reciprocity is give and take okay okay before we discuss those uh, uh, masalas we will try to look at some key factors okay for any persuasion exercise for any persuasion task to achieve its goal three things need to be kept in mind the first is the right intentions the parties on both sides should have the right intentions that's the um, what do you call that that's the the sign qua non i don't know how to pronounce that sign qua non of any persuasion exercise second is it has to be a win win if anybody wants to win at the cost of other those persuasions generally will not have a good uh, uh, percentage of winning and then of course ethical considerations we've discussed a lot about it as long as these three factors are kept in mind then the probability of success in any persuasion is very very high so we looked at some important points we have some seven important steps which I, i would like to take you very briefly the first is the reciprocity reciprocity is nothing but as human beings all of us are obliged to give back to others what we receive okay a big research was conducted in the united states why on uh, you know on the subject of why people give tips to servers why do you give tip to a waiter because a waiter comes to you and provides you some soft or something like that he provides you some chocolate or a pint we are obligated to some, to give something back to them okay so that is a reciprocity so in any persuasion exercise if you want to succeed first you have to give in order to receive that's extremely important don't try to win all the wars yourselves you may have to lose little bit of battles here and there in order to win the war now when i give a comparison about wars and uh, battles don't 
take it as a manipulation technique. It is not. I'm only talking about persuasions, keeping the ethical things in mind. I'm only talking about that. All, all said and done, we need to first give to receive. For example, you cannot win a big prize without betting. And betting involves money. So before getting a big sum, you have to first give a small sum, whether it is a, a lottery ticket, whether it is a gambling casino, everywhere you have to first give in order to receive. Reciprocity, a very, very important aspect of any persuasion exercise. The second is scarcity. Whenever you talk about scarcity, people will not realize the importance of things as long as they have it with them. People never realize that. But when the scarcity is created, that is when people feel the importance of it. And let me also give you a domestic example. Many of us take our wives for granted. Many of us, frankly speaking, we take our respective wives for granted. But when they move out to their native place or whatever for a long time, that is when you really feel their absence, right? So scarcity is one of the very important parts in a persuasion. Now you might wonder, what has scarcity got to do with persuasion? We're going to talk about it. There was a case study of British Airways. There was a flight between London and Heathrow, uh, between these two destinations. But somewhere the seats were not getting fulfilled. The airport company, the airline company, the British Airways, in this case, they were not making profits at all. They wanted to shut down this, but they just start group of experts, strategists, I don't know what, they just planned that, okay, we will announce that and let's see the feedback from people and based on that, let's take a final call. But when they announced that they will be shutting down the flights, then once again, you found, they found that the all the flights started becoming full. What was the reason? This was one of the very important flights between Heathrow and New York, very convenient flight. But when this kind of a scarcity was created, then what happened? Automatically, the traffic grew. How it grew, all that is a different story. But this was an established case study on scarcity. So scarcity, creating scarcity is also one method of persuasion. You might have also, for example, to substantiate this example, you might have seen a lot of advertisements which is offer available one little stocks last. Obviously, they are considering this, using this particular tool to persuade you to buy it fast, okay? Then comes the authority. Very, very important. People follow the what is told by experts. So, people get persuaded if it is an expert who is saying that. For example, if you are a stock market expert, who people will believe? How do they know that you are a stock market? So, therefore, most of the stock market experts, what they do is they come on televisions, they put up video lessons, for example, they try to, you know, give you a, a feeling that they are experts in the subject, in the manner they take up topics, they will give you examples, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Even this training program, which I am doing to you, this is also there is a persuasion, there is an advertisement motive in this, because we run our own training programs, which run for three days and four days and uh, Hindustan uh, Petroleum is our customer, country no cooperation, Times of India, um, you know, Maruti Udyog, Renault, et cetera, et cetera. How do we advertise? Because the we encourage the trainers to come on YouTube, give this kind of training so that it gives confidence to the other company. Rather than interviewing the trainer for 15 minutes and half an hour, how do you do the training program? What is the methodology you uh, adopt? Uh, what do you do to engage your participants? What is it you do to make your training programs interesting, et cetera, et cetera. This one video for 15 minutes conveys it all, okay? So authority is one very important thing. So the second example we can take is if it is an MBBS doctor, they charge you 500 rupees, but if it is an MD doctor, you're willing to give them 1,000 1, rupees. Why? Is it because the MD doctor is a better doctor than an MBBS doctor? Maybe, may not be. One cannot be very sure of it, but that authority, um, you know, uh, makes a lot of difference as far as persuasion is concerned, okay? These degrees, diplomas, they make a lot of difference. I can personally tell you, I, I'm a doctor. Uh, I have a PhD degree from Birla Institute of Technology. That makes a lot of difference. There are lots and lots of trainers who are much better than me. But when I show my degree to them, my title, a PhD in consumer behavior, that too from one of the top ranking business institutions uh, in the country, uh, Birla Institute of Technology, then of course it adds a lot of weight. So in persuasion, authority also sometimes uh, helps a lot to you. Then comes consistency. Everybody wants 
consistency. To put it in short, the detective of uh, influence looks for voluntary, active, and public commitments. Consistency is extremely re required. In short, consistency is nothing but walking the talk. You say something, you should do that. That's consistency. For example, we'll take the example of a department manager persuading his subordinates to come to office on time. He should be consistent enough in coming to the office on time, on a day on day basis. Otherwise, he will not be effective in persuading others to do that. If somebody says, please wear your masks, he should be the one who should be wearing mask all the time in his office. He cannot be very lax about it and come out and explain to people <laughs> the virtues of wearing mask. We have seen a lot of people like that, okay? So consistency is extremely important for persuasion. Then of course, liking. You can easily persuade people who like you. Therefore, instead of persuading them, do certain things through which they start liking you. That is where establishing trust becomes extremely important. In fact, we take up lots and lots of case studies, which we uh, discuss, debate in detail in real training programs. But here, uh, for purposes of lack of time, I'm, I'm unable to explain all those case studies to you. This is a gist of what we will be doing in the uh, training program on persuasion. Okay, This persuasion is extremely important for your sales people, uh, even for your HR people who are involved in negotiations. It's important for them. It can be important for your administration people who are in touch with government officials, with fire department, etc., etc. Because every time they go there, they are persuading somebody or other, of course, in the interest of the company. And persuasion is not putting your hand on their shoulders and speaking a few sweet words. There is a complete science behind it. And that is exactly what we are doing in this uh, training program. Okay, so important factors as far as liking somebody is concerned. We like people who are similar to us. It's also called as mirroring. Uh, then we like people who compliment us. We like people who cooperate with us. We look for areas of similarity, okay? There are some case studies done on this in Harvard University where uh, a group of people were sent on a business mission, et cetera, et cetera. That's a big case study. We'll discuss that in detail during the actual training program. Compliments are extremely important to people who like. Okay, that's one. And then finally, it is a consensus part of it. Consensus is how do you achieve, arrive at a consensus? Because consensus is the ultimate result of any persuasion exercise. How do you arrive at that? What is the path that you take to achieve that consensus? Okay, these are some of the issues. And the most important part of that is three Vs. Uh, three Vs typically is visual, vocal, and uh, uh, verbal. Uh, this is a theory which I have taken from Dr. Alexandra, one of the great management gurus, and he did his PhD in this area of uh, consumer behavior where I also, that's the same area uh, where I've done my uh, PhD uh, from. And I've taken a lot of leaves from his book where he talks about three important things in which there is a case study of the presidential debate that happened between Nixon and Kennedy. One of the most powerful case studies, uh, we discussed that. So typically when you talk about visual, so talk, typically when you talk about verbal, verbal means words and the words alone. Second is vocal. In terms of vocal is typically in terms of how those words are said. I can say one word in so many different ways and they can probably give you totally different meaning. Your word by itself does not have any meaning, but it takes on a meaning depending on the context in which it is said and the manner in which it is said. That is the most important part of vocal. And then finally, you have the visual elements. Typically, when you talk about visual, as you say that, what is your body language? Is it so pleasing? Can I say, can you put off the can you put off the TV? I can also say, can you put off the TV? Can say, can you put off the TV? Makes a lot of difference. Now, if you were to write it in the form of words in a sentence, can you put off the TV? That by itself does not convey anything. So, hundred percent of the message is only conveyed when all these three things come together. And that's the power of three views. Nixon and Kennedy debates he explained that explains that a lot better. Just to give you a small example, what happened in that debate? Just like presidential presidential debates happen year on year, I'm sure most of you would have seen this debate between Trump and uh, Joe Biden recently. The presidential debates between that lady, 
uh, Kamala Harris and uh, uh, that professor, vice president uh, uh, candidate, uh, forgetting his name. Anyway, that's not very important. Presidential debates. So when Nixon and Kennedy, this is a story that dates back to 1965 or so, when those elections, 1965, after the debates were over, because those were the days when television was not uh, much in vogue, even in US, television was a luxury during those days, and most of the uh, people used to hear these through radio. Anyway, so once the debate was over, the pollsters went to the streets and they wanted to check the effectiveness of this particular debate. So after the polls and, uh, you know, after that, they went on the streets and asked people on the streets, whom will you vote for? They wanted to find if there was a significant difference in their voting preferences before and after the debates. When they asked people, data was compiled and they put through um, some analysis, statisticians sat on it. They did all those statistical tests significant test, derived a hypothesis, et cetera, trial A, B, error, trial B, error. These are some that generally researchers do. And uh, unfortunately, they were not in a position to come to any conclusion. Looking at all the variables, local Americans, immigrant Americans, Hispanics, uh, people from India, from China, from various, does it make a difference? No. Educated people, non-educated people, no. Men, women, gender, um, 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 the East Coast people, West Coast people, they couldn't come to any proper inference. They've identified all these factors, but there was nothing on the result of which they will be able to make a meaningful inference. Obviously, they took this entire set of data to some professors in Harvard and they put their brain on it, the best of the best brains in the world. They spent time on it and then finally they came out with a report. They called these pollsters and said, your statistics, in your statistic modeling, a very important aspect is missed out, especially as far as this survey was concerned, which was the reason why they couldn't arrive at any meaningful uh, solution. You know what was it? very, very surprising when I went through that. After that, you know, I started using it in some of my training programs. And later I heard everywhere in the world, especially communication programs, persuasion programs, especially at leadership levels, these things are discussed. You know, what was that factor? Whole lot of people who said Kennedy will win, they watched the same program on the television. And whole lot of people who said, Nixon will win. They heard it on the radio because television was a luxury during those days. They heard it on the radio. Now, as regards the subject of discussions today, which is persuasion, were the words the same in radio as well as television? Absolutely, it was the same. Were, was the vocal same? Everything was same. Vocal was also same. Everything was same. But what made the difference was visual elements. The words and the vocals were the same, but as they were said, what was their body language? How was their body behaving? Their hand gestures, their face, the smile on the face, pleasing, um, conciliation, confrontation, everything comes out. So you get 100% of the message only when all the three important elements come together. That is the verbal, visual, and the vocal. The survey opened the uh, mind-breaking uh, perspectives, the whole manner in which we look at persuasion and communication, extremely important. So the moral of the whole story, because this is what we clear it, you know, cover in a three, four day training program, but somehow I've been able to encapsulate the whole thing in a much shorter time. So rather than relying on our preconceived ability to persuade, we can learn a lot from others who have done these, who have implemented these and succeeded. Therefore, I would like to conclude this. Uh, persuasion is both a science and an art. My name is Dr. Sadashivam. I'm a trainer, management trainer. And uh, if you like this, I request you to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. I will be coming up with more and more training modules like this. Those of you who have a requirement in your company to do these training programs, you can please approach me. The other details are there in this YouTube page. 
and those of you do not have any requirement please subscribe to this channel we will be coming out with lots and lots of such capsules go through all these capsules and do remember to put your comments there and if you want me to shoot up special training programs please mention that and i will uh, set up my team to create content and then i will deliver all that to you free of cost thank you very much have a great day jai hind <laughs> Lo no lo